Hey guys, and welcome to Quarter Shot. I'm really excited to be joined by Aaron the Creek Connoisseur. And as you can probably tell, we're going to be going over the South Africa squad for the T20 World Cup, the Pro TAs, as Aaron likes to call them. Aaron, first of all, how are you doing, mate? All good, Faisal. All good. Yeah, to be honest, it's been quite a busy day. I've been covering some <laughs> county cricket, Warwickshire versus Yorkshire. We were bowled out for 155 runs, which wasn't ideal, but Chris Wokes did come back for the Bear and Ragged staff. Yorkshire 95 freight at Stumps. All good. It's been a busy day. And of course, Faisan, an absolute pleasure to join you as always here on Quality Shot. Talk a bit about cricket and uh, yeah, an interesting discussion, shall we say, on our hands tonight with this Proteus squad. Let's just 100%. say not many South Africa fans are very happy with some of the selections. Okay, well, can't wait to dive into that. And yeah, that pitch sounds like it's a bowler's paradise, doesn't it? That Yorkshire <laughs> Birmingham pitch. So anyway, let's get, let's get into this then. Obviously, uh, as you can see on the screen, if you can't, I'll very, very quickly go through if you're list, just listening. Uh, Bavuman is, is the captain. Maharaj, Nokia, De Kock, Mark Crumbatorius, uh, Fortune, Miller, Rabada, Hendricks, as that's Reza Hendricks, uh, Mulder, Shamsi, Klaassen, and Gidi, Vanadassen. And we've got three reserves, so we'll be travelling with the squad just in case of, I guess, injuries, etc. Uh, George Lind, uh, Felicueo, and uh, Lizard Williams. Uh, initial thoughts then, I guess. Well, let, let's let's tackle it, I guess, backwards. So let's talk about the reserves first. Firstly, do you think they should be in the squad rather than just reserves? And or do you think they should be at reserves at all? One of them should be in the squad, and that is definitely George Linder. He has done absolutely nothing to be warranted of this dropping at all. And I know a lot of South Africa fans were absolutely shocked that to see him in the reserves when he's been so clinical. I think back to the England series when we were playing in Cape Town and Paul. Paul does have a little bit more for the spinners, but he was so impressive in Newlands. And he's been such a reliable figure in the past year or so for the Proteas. And for him to be dropped to the reserves... I think is incredibly harsh. I really do. And I know a lot of Proteus fans also agree with that. In terms of the other two reserves, I mean, a lot of people are calling for, for Petal Acquire to be dropped. He has not been in the greatest of forms. Of course, we think yes. Mandalay more as an all-rounder. But the fact is, his batting hasn't been there and neither is his bowling. So potentially that's another one you could have brought in someone like a Marco Janssen, for example, who has IPL experience, has played for the Mumbai Indians. Miguel Pretorius is another one who's been playing in the CPL for the Jamaica Talawas. So... I know some people are also questioning that. In terms of Lizard, Lizard is an absolute gun. Okay, I don't think he was ready just yet for the main squad, but I'll tell you what, that boy has got an incredibly bright future. So in terms of the reserves, Vizam, Linda, I think, will be really, really feeling harshly done by. I feel as though he definitely deserved a spot in that in that main squad. Peth Lequire, again, he is a reserve. So again, injury aside, he probably won't be featuring, neither will Williams, but... I do think with Linda in particular, I think South Africa have got that wrong and it sends out a pretty bad message to not only the player himself, but also to some of the fans who have seen this guy progress, develop with this side over the past year or so. And on the eve of a major tournament, a tournament which he deserves to be in, he's been dropped. So incredibly harsh, in my opinion, by the selectors. Yeah, no, I agree. I think George Lind has uh, performed pretty well, I thought, with the kind of ball and bat, especially opening the bowling as well, bowling quite tight, left arm, just firing it in really and uh, managing to keep runs down. I think his economy has been pretty damn good in those matches I have seen. I mean, of course, he hasn't performed every single T20. It's quite hard to do that, though, <laughs> in the format, to be honest. I feel like, well, yeah, has been in absolutely shocking form, hasn't he, I think? Unfortunately, after coming back from injury, hasn't really looked the same player. Um, and then Lizard Williams, I thought, looked really good um, against Barksline, I know, as well. I know they've got quite a few and Almost an embarrassment of riches when it comes to pace bowlers. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's maybe why he hasn't made the squad. Uh, but yeah, agree with George then for sure. Uh, then we're going to go harsh, first of all. Who in the squad do you think shouldn't be in the squad or should be in the reserves? Oh, that's a really tough question. That is a really, really tough question. Uh, and I'll tell you why it's a tough one, because there are some notable omissions. And I know, Faisal, yeah. we're going to talk about them. Faf du Plessis. In runs yep. are here, Chris Morris, for example. We knew about De Villiers months ago. But yeah. to be honest, in terms of the reserves there, the only thing that you could say, and again, he has had a fantastic start to T20 cricket, but that is Keshav Maharaj. Okay, and he's been brilliant for the Dolphins in South Africa's domestic scene. He's played ODI cricket, played loads of test matches as well. One of South Africa's finest spinners. But again, with George Linder, not only do you get that left arm action, you also get a bit of batting. So maybe that's just one change I would say. And the fact is, Keshav only made his T20i debut 
the other day. He's made his T20i series in this. He's, he's made his T20i debut, sorry, in this current series against Sri Lanka. He's captaining, isn't he? <laughs> and he has done an excellent job. I must admit, South Africa have taken yeah. an unassailable 2 0 lead. So, again, maybe Keshav, that could be something which turns out to be a masterstroke. Who knows? But I'm just on about in terms of experience. I'm t- talking about, you know, overall performances before this major tournament. That is one change I would have made. Um, another massive omission is Yanaman Milan. Now, him for that, me, yeah. he, he, he's a brilliant batsman, destructive, yeah. can change the entire outlook of a power play and take the game away from the opposition in the space of five or six overs. He is one of the most hard-hitting and lethal and destructive batsmen in South Africa right now. The key thing with him, though, is this perceived vulnerability against spin. And we all know where this T20 World Cup is being held. It's being held in the United Arab Emirates, which um, let's just say is quite spin conducive, in particular in Dubai, yeah. Sharjah as well. Abu Dhabi might be. We'll have to wait and see how Abu Dhabi does, um, does play. But maybe that's why he's not in the squad. So in terms of players in that squad, I don't think any of them don't deserve to be there. I think the, the issue behind people's frustration is a breakdown in communication with these notable absentees. There's no clarity. We haven't been given any reason as to why the likes of Morris, Tahir, Duplessis or Yanama Milan have not been selected in this team. And that is the root issue of people's frustrations about this South Africa team. Because let's be honest, Faf Duplessis has scored over 1,500 runs for South Africa in T20I cricket. One of their all-time leading run scorers in the format is in the form of his life. He's been so, so good in every single franchise and domestic tournament He's played in 2020 and 2021, and he's not going to be playing at the T20 World Cup. It, it's it's bamboozling. It's it, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. That's like India not selecting Rohit Sharma. It, it's honestly it is of that magnitude. Faf Duplessis is one of the greatest South African batsmen to grace the game in the last decade, pretty much ever since he made his memorable debut in that Australia series. So for me, Faizan, to be honest, in terms of the in terms of the squad itself, all of those guys do deserve to be there. Reza, for example, has been in great form as an opening batsman. Aidan Markram has really made that three or four spot his own in recent in recent times. If you think back to the Pakistan series, in this current Sri Lanka series as well, his strike rotation has been absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, look at the bowlers. There's absolutely no worries there. But it's just a case of what if. And again, that is going to be something which I feel could impact South Africa in this year's tournament, in an incredibly strong group alongside the likes of Australia, England, and of course the West Indies. Yeah, agreed. It's uh, it's definitely a very interesting uh, list of omissions. I think Imran Dahir was very upset. I think, uh, just to quote him directly, actually, I think he said that he uh, reached out to Mark Butcher um, about obviously getting selected, etc., and um, said that he was very up for being part of the World Cup T20 squad, didn't have any communication at all from Butcher at all. Uh, and then obviously after being left out, again, like no communication whatsoever. So he's basically just been left in the wilderness, which, and, and understandably, I guess he's, I don't know whether maybe Mark Butcher's changed his number, but um, <laughs> he's just a bit upset in Rontaro because he feels like, obviously he's been a long servant for the Proteas and is thinking, well, I'm kind of being treated like I'm nothing. Uh, in a little bit, I think is what, he was trying to say. So that's a little bit sad. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason for it. And, you know, I guess they've got Shamsi in there and, uh, you know, fine. Like, you know, I guess with Maharaj or Linda or Fortune, they're going to pick those guys. So fine. But uh, I think maybe, as you said, a bit of clarity would have been good from uh, South Africa, whether it's from Mark Butcher or, or you know, Smith, uh, who is obviously the... Or Victor uh, and Zang, the chief exactly. selector. Yeah, Again, 100%. but the problem is that there hasn't been this clarity. There's been this this massive breakdown of communication. There hasn't been this direct line with with the players, let alone the fans. Okay, yeah. the fact is, if you read some of the stuff that's come out of this whole saga in the past few days, Chris Morris, for example, has not been in touch with either of those big three names: Graham Smith, Mark Boucher, or Victor M. Pitsang, since July 2020. Chris Morris, okay, a guy who lit up the IPL last year for the Royal Challengers Bangalore, has been in great form for the Rajasthan Royals, came back to South Africa and performed for the Multiply Titans, and yet this guy is not in that team. Faf Duplessis, another one. Complete lack of communication. Imran Tahir as well. How on earth can you leave Imran Tahir out of this squad 
when he is one of the best T20 bowlers on the planet right now and has been one of the best, again, for the best part of a decade. He's one of the masters yeah. of the craft of T20 leg spin, and he's not in the World Cup. So this is the key thing here, and this will be the downfall of this South Africa team. On paper, that is not a bad squad. I know that people are saying it's the worst South Africa squad they've ever seen and this, that, the other. But the fact is, there are excellent players in there. Yeah. The likes of Kahisa Rabada, Anrik Nokia, Aidan Markram's in good form. Quinton de Kock is fantastic as well. Tabray Shamsi, the number one ranked T20i bowler on the planet right now. But pair those names with a Faf Duplessy, with an Imran Tahir, with a Chris Morris, even a Yanaman Milan, for example, up the top of the order. And suddenly that South Africa team goes from, I don't know, what would you say, outside shouts, if shouts at all, of getting through in Group 8 to being actual contenders. And that is where the South Africa side, unfortunately, falls short. And again, nothing on the players. It's out of their control. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's um, it's just a massive mess. It's a massive shame. And it's a massive breakdown of communication, to be honest. And I feel sorry. I genuinely do feel sorry for South Africa fans because it, it's unthinkable. It really is to have to have had this much of a mess before T20 World Cup. is It's uncomprehendable. So... Yeah, I'm just saying I do have a lot of sympathy with the South Africa fans out there who obviously feel quite aggrieved uh, with some of the emissions in that squad. Yeah, it's hard to disagree. Um, and it sounds like obviously you're saying the emissions, you would like them to be in the squad. And I can see uh, why as well. It's very difficult not to have them in there. I think if you are just a fan of cricket, to be honest with you, but uh, let's see if the reasons do come out in the end. Um, I want to ask you then in terms of if you had to pick the side, you're the selector, you're the coach, you're Mark Boucher, and you had to set the, the team for the first game, uh, who are you going with and why? See, this is really tough. This is really tough because, in particular, the role of David Miller. Because for years, I've been saying this, I've also said it on Cricket Fanatics magazine, a South African publication. David Miller, to me, I don't think is a number five. I see him as someone in the top four. I don't okay. see him as an out-and-out -out finisher. I see him as someone who, if you give him 30-odd deliveries, he can make a game-changing 70 or even 80, for example. He's that kind of batsman. It's no good Dave Miller coming in in the 17th or 18th over. Okay, he's a much better batsman than that. So that is the major problem, I think, with this South Africa team heading into this World Cup. With that being said, though, I will give you a top six, Vizan. And I think in terms of opening, you can see them both on the screen there. Temba Bavuma as the captain with Quinton de Kock, left-hand, right-hand combination. Fantastic, has served them well. I know a lot of people say about Reza Hendricks, but again, I, I just feel as though that might, you know, unbalance the squad slightly. Even though Reza has been in fantastic form, I feel like with the, you know, the reintroduction of Temba into the side as the captain, they'll stick with Temba opening the batting alongside Quinton. At number three, I would go Aidan Markram because he has been in absolutely scintillating form. He's been brilliant. He's been outstanding against spin in the Sri Lanka series and, of course, against Pakistan. So Aiden goes... Isn't it through. funny, though, isn't it, that we... What was it? Only recently he started playing T20s for South Africa mm -hmm. and he was a complete outside chance. No one gave him a, a kind of a a kind of a chance in hell really to get into the squad and he's done it. So I was going to say props to him, isn't it? He's, and he's really good as well. He has. And fair play to him. And the fact is, again, someone who's done this in South Africa's domestic circuit for the Titans has been very, very good in the T20 Cup. And, of course, the Mzanzi Super League as well. But Aidan Markham at three, I feel like, would really suit the Proteus. And also, he can offer you some spin as well, which, as we <laughs> know in this tournament, could be quite handy. So, Aidan Markham at three. At number four, Rassi van der Dusen. I don't think there's much more I need to add, to be honest. Rassi is in scintillating form. An excellent number four. Then at number five, I, I suppose you do have to go with David Miller, to be honest. So, I would go David Miller at five hope that he comes in a little bit earlier. You could even bump him up the order. He could be quite flexible in terms of the role that he actually plays in that squad. At number six, Dwayne Pretorius. The guy's an absolute gun. Simple as that. He can bass, he can bowl, he can field. He, again, is a very, very useful candidate in that Proteus outfit. So Dwayne would be my number seven. The bowlers is an interesting one. Again, you do have to... So, sorry, do you say Dwayne would be your number six? Six. Six, six. Okay. Correct. I'm saying from seven onwards, this is where you get into, oh, okay. for South Africa, the bowlers. And this yeah. is the problem with the side, because you have a Chris Morris in there, all of a sudden you're extending the batting even further. Now, in terms of the bowlers, this does depend on conditions, of course. Um, if they're looking to short the batting slightly, you could have Kesha Maharaj at seven. 
Rabada at eight, someone like Nokia at nine, then have a Bjorn Fortain at ten. In fact, that's probably a bit too low for Bjorn, actually. Put Bjorn at nine, <laughs> <laughs> Nokia at ten, and to brace Shamsi at 11. I think that'd be my side, to be honest, for the pro okay. tiers. Lots of spin. It's served them well in Sri Lanka. They've got some yeah. excellent spinners at their disposal. The only problem, though, is that it's that lack of all-rounder. They needed a second one yeah. in there. And for me, Vion Morda isn't ready just yet in T20 cricket. Yeah. In tests, completely different circumstances. But in T20 cricket, I think he's not proven enough just yet on the international stage. Not for the Lions in domestic cricket, but for the Proteas. I don't feel as though he has really you know, solidified that spot just yet. So that would be my Proteas 11 for the World Cup. Mm, very interesting. So yeah, so no... I guess notable missions would be Klaassen, Mulder, as you you mentioned, obviously Hendricks um, as well, and Angidi, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Although Ang Angidi, right. I think, is quite divisive, um, to be honest with you. And I, I don't know how effective he will be in the UAE, to be honest, as well. So I think it's quite hard to disagree with your side, honestly. Um, I think that's pretty much what I would go with. Um, I, I can't really see. I mean, I would like to, you know, I would have liked to have George Linden there, but obviously he's a reserve. So. Um, that's the issue, and obviously we, we talked about Montari and Padre and others, and you know that is what it is. But um, yeah, I think that side is. I mean, Markram has looked fantastic. I thought um, in the last few months, I, I've been really impressed. I think for me, he just so he looks so good to watch. And at first, a lot of people thought he's only going to be able to play Test match cricket, not even ODIs or T20s, because of how almost classical and traditional he plays for the most part. Uh, and then obviously he's managed to do it a bit in the ODIs and now in the T20s as well. And managed to score pretty quickly as well. He's not a slow player. I've seen him hit 50s at 160, 170 strike rate, which um, you know is pretty good going, to be honest with you. So uh, very good going even. So uh, that's been very impressive, I think. And not by slogging either, uh, which is great to see. And I'm a very big advocate that you can play proper shots and still score quickly. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, we're kind of going to the complete opposite uh, side of the spectrum, really, uh, in the in the sport of cricket, but um, I do think it's still doable. Um, I guess just to finish up, then, who are your? So, if I had to ask you uh, two players, a, a bowler and a batsman, who you think are going to be key for South Africa uh, going into the World Cup, who would they be? Very easy choices: Quinton de Kock with the bat, to Bray Shamsi with the ball, and we know exactly why. Quinton de Kock is an X-factor player can single-handedly win the Proteus games. A quick 80, not outs, for example, at the top of the order. And South Africa do have the capabilities. They have the bowlers to defend 160, 170. And then, of course, talking of those bowlers, to Bray Shamsi. He is one of the names on everybody's lips at the moment. Number one ranked T20i bowler, left arm wrist spinner, has a beautiful googly. Yeah, to Bray Shamsi for me. I think he's going to have an excellent World Cup. It's just a shame, of course, that we didn't get to see Shamsi into here together. But again, one of those missed opportunities, unfortunately, for the, the men in green and yellow. <laughs> Maybe it was too much energy for uh, people to handle, potentially. <laughs> that might be why. Uh, but yeah, that'd be fantastic. You could, you could just imagine they would be really competitive as well, probably the change room. Uh, a nice, fun little uh, uh, competition and rivalry going on there, which would be great to see. Uh, yeah, thank you, Aaron, as well, uh, for being on again. I do appreciate it. Really looking forward, obviously, to the T20 World Cup. Uh, guys, we are going to be doing um south africa and all the other of course you know so uh, test nations in the world t20 and also we're going to be going over the association which i'll be doing with aaron as well um of course aaron you can see is very happy about that uh, so mm, we'll be going yeah. over that because i think they, they need a bit of time on the channel um exactly I think they're, they're going to be competing in the in the world cup and who knows if they qualify which at least you know a few of them will uh then i think we should probably know uh, a little bit more about them so that should be fun as well uh, please do check out Aaron on the County Cricket Podcast uh, it's on all good podcast platforms and also uh, he's on Twitter as well uh, very very active on there and knows his stuff of course so do check him out on there as well uh, thank you very much guys please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next video thank you very much